whenever we want to find the um, center of any rectangle or square, we go in there and we can go from corner to corner and draw a straight line. And this finds us the exact center point here. And it also finds us the horizontal and vertical center. And then we can then further subdivide that, right? Go corner to corner, corner to corner, corner to corner, corner to corner. And then we can subdivide again. And we can create a whole checkerboard pattern this way. And we can subdivide as many times as we want. This can get extremely technical and really annoying. So um, it's better to maybe just subdivide once. If you want to get technical, you can get technical. Um, but I don't necessarily recommend it for every single purpose. We're working on translating this grid pattern over into uh, perspective. Um, and this could be for uh, object drawing, or for linear perspective buildings and whatnot. Again, we're gonna do corner to corner, get our X, drop our vertical, and it's important to notice here that this is the visual center, right? It's not the actual mathematical center because what you'll notice is that this distance is small and this distance is big. And, remember, and remembering that bigger, smaller, it's how you're gonna enable yourself to estimate that in the future when you just need to sketch something and maybe your vanishing points off the page um, and you don't have to be that particular about it. So again, we're just gonna go ahead and translate this. We're gonna do our, our subdivisions again, draw our, our multitude of X's, draw vertical, vertical, orthogonal, going back to the vanishing point, orthogonal, going back to the vanishing point. And then I've drawn a couple of little things in blue to show you how you can actually use this. Right? So we can go to this part of the grid over here, we can translate this triangle onto the grid over here. So now that triangle looks like it's in perspective. And we can do the same thing with this blue diamond. We say, well, the blue diamond's there, and it's going to go back in perspective, intersect there, and it's going to intersect at this point and this point. So we can just go ahead and connect the dots. And we wind up with a blue diamond in perspective. And you'll notice how the shape just looks a little bit funky, a little bit distorted. And it's hard to estimate that distortion sometimes. And that's why we can, and that's why we have a tool like this to help us with, um, you know, how exactly does this distort from uh, our flat into our dimensional, uh, our illusion of dimension. Now the important thing to remember too is that you would think that you could put any shape that you want because you can take this rectangle and you can take a triangle. You could take this rectangle and a smaller rectangle. You could take your rectangle and a diamond. And it's all going to work out. Any ideas? And so you would think that you could take the rectangle and a circle and translate into perspective using this X method. But what happens is that it looks a little bit weird. Because remember, it's not the actual center, it's the visual center. So if we do our X method subdivision, get our center, our center, and then draw in our circle, hitting the points here, it's gonna look super lopsided. That's because circles have their own geometrical thing going on. In geometry, a lot of the equations use triangular based stuff to estimate circles, but when you're drawing, circles need their own sort of uh, own sort of deal. So when you do this, this is kind of your no-no. So don't do that. This X method subdivision goes for everything but circles.